How would you like to improve your health and keep your family safe? You're listening to the Healthy Home Hacks podcast, where we firmly believe enjoying optimal health shouldn't be a luxury. Healthy Home Authorities and husband and wife team, Ron and Lisa, will help you create a home environment that will level up your health. It's time to hear from the experts. Listen in on honest conversations and gain the best tips and advice. If you're ready to dive in and improve your well being and increase your energy, you're in the right place. All right, here are your hosts bow biologists, authors, media darlings, vicarious vegans, and avocado aficionados, Ron and Lisa Barris. I'm not sure if Walmart prices are rolling back, but I know here in California and other states across the country, stay at home orders sure are. More time at home means more exposure to hidden toxins that permeate your indoor air, your drinking and bathing water, your bedding, and even something called electromagnetic pollution from wireless devices. Be sure to take our online free seven day healthy home challenge to learn how to stay safe, protect your loved ones and improve your health today. Did I mention it's free? Plus you get a really cool bonus gift called the stay safe at home checklist just for completing the entire week. Visit bit.ly forward slash the healthy at home challenge now you and your family's health depends on it hey guys so thank you for joining us today we have a very special guest with us who will be discussing a healthy modality that you may or may not have ever heard of before earthing or grounding our guest today is clinton ober I don't know if he remembers meeting us briefly at the movie premiere of the Earthing movie by Josh and Rebecca Tickell in Hollywood last year or not. (laughs) And if you haven't seen this movie yet, please run, don't walk, barefoot, of course, to watch it. Yeah, that movie is a must see. Incredible film. Clint, you did an amazing job there. And in fact, I want to introduce you. I wanted the audience to understand your background and where you come from. So, So Clinton Ober is the CEO of Earth FX Inc a research and development company. It's located in Palm Springs, California. And he first learned of grounding when installing cable TV systems in Billings, Montana in the early 1960s. A decade later, he formed Telecrafter Corporation and built it into the largest provider of cable installation services in the USA. This company specialized in proper grounding of cable installations for safety and for TV signal stability. In the 1980s, he turned his attention to developing computer industry and partnered with McGraw-Hill to distribute live digital news services via cable to PCs. And this led to the development of the first cable modem and an increased awareness of a need for proper system grounding. And following a health challenge in 1995, Clint retired and he embarked on a personal journey looking for a higher purpose in life. And during his travels, Clint noticed people wearing plastic and rubber soled shoes that insulated the body from the earth. And he wondered if no longer being naturally grounded could affect us. The question led to an experiment that suggested grounding alone reduced chronic pain and improved sleep. Thereafter, he developed a working hypothesis. Earth grounding the human body normalizes functioning of all bodily systems. So over the past 20 years, he has supported a host of research studies like the Earthing Institute that collectively demonstrate that grounding alone reduces inflammation and promotes normal functioning of all body systems. Clint, welcome to the show. Welcome. Well, thank you so much for uh, inviting me and spending time visiting with me and helping to uh, hopefully share some of this information with your followers and your family. Well, Clint, you are you are the pioneer. You are the legend in this industry. What exactly is earthing? If anyone can describe it, you can. All right. Well, first of all, a little science lesson. The earth itself has a negative charge, meaning the word negative, meaning no charge. And so when you, and it's an electrical phenomena. So when you put your bare feet on the earth, and to give some uh, reference to that, throughout all time, we were always barefoot or we always wore a leather sole shoe or we were always, you know, in living in nature and touching the earth, touching live things. But anyhow, in the 1960s, about, we invented polymers and we started making the rubber sole shoes 
and the uh, conductive flooring and all of these creature comforts. <laughs> and uh, so when you when the human body stands on the earth itself, then your body will become negatively charged like the earth, meaning it will reduce any charge in the body. So anyhow, then when we started wearing these river sole shoes and everything, then we we lost our natural ground. We lost this connection with the earth. And now our bodies are more positively charged. And we have, and the um, inflammation began to manifest in the 1960s, like in diabetes, autism, lupus, MS, all of these health disorders. And they've been on an exponential curve for the last 30 years, is you know, 60 years. And um, uh, so anyhow, what are you know, so I, am I answering the question here? Basically, yeah. when, you, when you stand on the earth, your body is negatively charged. So mm -hmm. inflammation is a positive charge. So what we've spent the last 20 years is rounding people to the earth to validate the effects of grounding the body. And what we learned was is you can't have inflammation on in a grounded body. Mm. Wow. Uh, Clint, quick question. Is that similar to like getting negative ions from the ocean? Yeah, an ion is a is a molecule that has a you know um, electrons and so on, but it's more of a molecule. But okay. electrons are more of the they float around the shells of the ions and so on. Yeah, they're all similar. Yes, yes, they're all wow. similar. Yes, and negative. And I know some people listening when you say you know it's we actually want the negative ions. The negative yeah. ions are positive. The positive yeah. ions are negative. <laughs> so <laughs> well, it's confusing. Listening. Yeah, think of it this way. You want the negative, no charge ones. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I don't even know if you know our background, but I got severely ill over 15 years ago when I moved into a newly remodeled home and I was exposed to all of this off gassing of these toxic chemicals. Yes. And I went through, a, I, do, I dove deep into a healing journey. And at that time, I, I was familiar with earth and grounding because I, I looked into everything natural. Mm -hmm. So I had come across um, that and we had purchased a grounding pad and I didn't recall having issues when I first started using it. But then we moved about 11 years ago into a new home and I ceased to put the grounding pad back on the bed. Just it got lost kind of in the chaos of the move. Yes. So when I finally did add it back, I noticed a really strange and uncomfortable tingling sensation through my entire body. Uh -huh. And I was totally unaware of what this was and it made me really nervous. And so I washed the pad because these are washable and Clint's going to tell you more about these later. We're going to talk about what, what I'm talking about, what this pad is. Uh -huh. I washed the pad, I wrapped it back up and I stored it. So I went through this process a few more times because I knew the grounding pad had worked for me, but I was like, why am I having these strange sensations? Mm -hmm. So later we noticed, Ron and I both noticed our sleeping patterns in this house just really wasn't good. We were waking up tired, tossing and turning all night. Right. And so we had made some additional changes to our bedroom by removing a few unknown EMF sources, such as an electric clock that we had near the head of our bed. And then I decided after that, I'm going to try the pad one more time. And voila, the tingling had ceased and I was able to sleep incredible. So is this normal, Clint? Do you hear this? And if so, what do you recommend for people who are using a grounding pad? And I may, might have jumped into that really quickly, but we'll get into oh. what that is. Oh, that's fine. That's the real story right there. You know, first of all, I need to share with you a couple of things. One, um, over the last... 20 years, there's probably over a million people that are, are on these grounding mats and whatever now. And uh, they're mostly 35 to 55 year old women. And these women, their health is compromised on some basis. And they're also taking care of their mom whose health is compromised and they're taking care of their kids and occasionally their husbands when they let <laughs> Husbands last on the list? <laughs> Clint! <laughs> no, it's, you know, it's just that, it's just that, for instance, you know, 90% of the visits to a practitioner are female. Yeah. Oh, really? So, Clint, what are you saying? The husbands don't listen. No, I'm saying that <laughs> husband, no a husband doesn't go to a doc until he has his first heart attack. Generally, yeah, that's so and, true. But yeah. the, but women are more the caregivers in the family, and they kind of take care of the husbands, take care of everybody. And I'm not putting guys down. You know, guys are just slow learners. It took me. <laughs> it's it took okay. I understand, to, Clint. It's okay. It took me 20 years to get this thing out of the. You know, yeah. And they're very bad at like, even in an emergency situation, like going to the hospital, I hear the yeah. story all the time, like, Oh no, no, I'm fine. I'll tough it out. And then yeah. that can make things so bad. 
maybe you can give an overview of what the pads are. We're going to get really into this in a little bit, okay. but um, you know, is this normal for someone who starts to do the earthing yes. and, and practice this, this tingling? Like it made yeah. me scared. I thought something was wrong. Yeah. It's going to take me a little, a few minutes to explain this one for you. Yeah. Okay. So basically what happens is your body is like a capacitor, meaning it's like a little battery and the earth is a big battery and it's being charged by the sun. So when you put your feet on the earth, then your body charges up, equalizes with the earth and your battery comes. But as the pro I mean, if you are very short on electrons, if you haven't been grounding for a long period of time, or if your health is compromised and you have inflammation in your body, then you will feel the tingling more so than not, but it mm. should dissipate after about 15 minutes. That's after the body equalizes a little bit. So this is a phenomenon that goes on with, with, a, with several people. And, um, and people who have like Lyme's and, and various other situations where, the, where their health is extremely compromised, well, the first thing that happens when you ground is your blood thins out and normalizes the blood viscosity because the little red blood cells, which are electrical, they equalize with the earth and become more negatively charged. Mm. And when they're negative, it's like two little negative magnets. You put them together and they push each other apart. Mm -hmm. So now the blood can get in there. And I mean, it's, it, it normalizes its thickness. I mean, it gets, becomes more thin. Now it can get in and out of the capillaries, clean up the, you know, the spirochetes and the ends of the capillaries that are trapped down there for, when you have poor circulation. And so you end up having sometimes a, even a flu feeling because of the die off of the spirochetes and various mm -hmm. things. But there's all kinds of phenomena and everybody's different. So there's no one thing for everybody. Yeah. Um, but the sensations are different, but a lot of it has to do with your living environment. Like you were mentioning, if you have a lot of uh, uh, VOCs in the environment, that's going to affect if you have an extreme amount of electric fields. It, it's like 99% of the people, or let's say 90 some percent of the people have are not affected by electric fields at all. Mm. And there's a reason for it. And that's because they're, the, the people who do have exhaust, I mean, who are sensitive to electric fields and static electricity and sometimes touch, touching fabrics or wind or noise or whatever, their adrenals are exhausted. Mm, that's what I had. Yeah. Adrenal burnout. So many yeah. people, women too, I think, because, you know, women are, um, they juggle. Yeah. I mean, we all juggle a lot today. They're stressed about their husband's lace. That's they're stressed yeah. about their husband's not going to the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I grew up in Montana and, you know, we, we had cows, cattle. I sat on a horse and babysit cows all day. And, and <laughs> you're, looking, you're looking for cows that uh, are not like, I mean, they're bawling or they're glassy eyed. Something's wrong with them. So you take them out of the herd and then you go check the pasture and make sure the pasture is clean and pristine. Because if you take care of the pasture, the cows will be healthy. If you don't take care of the pasture, then, the cows get sick, you call the vet, call the bank and say, hey, we're out of here. But, <laughs> but anyhow, while I was doing that, off times, I would be sitting there sometimes and, and the field is full of jackrabbits some years. And whenever there's jackrabbits, there's coyotes. Mm. And so the coyotes are, you know, the, ra the rabbits are sitting there eating grass like normal, just like all of us, we're just living our lives. And all of a sudden the coyote sneaks up and the rabbit senses the cortisol skyrockets, the ears go up. The coyote jumps, the rabbit springs, and it'll zigzag back and forth across the pasture. Mm. And 90% of the time, the coyote will run out of energy. He'll just stop dead in his tracks, lay down, and he'll be there panting. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I've that. never witnessed that. Yeah, but the rabbit will go just a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And when the rabbit, uh, I mean, he'll stop and it'll be sitting there and it'll be, you can see it. It's a visceral thing. They're just quivering because mm -hmm. their life has just been threatened. Right. But then all of a sudden they'll have this big shake and then they'll go back to eating grass like nothing ever happened. Wow. So I didn't know any of this at the time, but over the years I've been able to put this together with, especially with the help of some other researchers. But anyhow, so what happens is cortisol creates a lot of adrenaline, a lot of, uh, you know, it's, you know, your sympathetic nervous system is on, is heightened. So the cortisol is extreme. And so um, <clears throat> after the chase, you have to discharge that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise the cortisol will create like in women, anxiety, irritability, oftentimes mm -hmm. depression. And it goes in, if you don't discharge it, ground it out, 
ground out wow. the, trauma, the trauma of the chase. Mm -hmm. So I, the reason I, I tell that story is all is because the average woman who has children, a husband, lives in a house, has to you know, manage all of this. I mean, her life is full of coyotes. The kids yeah. can be coyotes <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I bet a lot of mothers would agree with that. Wow. <laughs> but they, the kids have all these you know, things that they need and, and you are in a panic to get all of these things done on time. And yeah. so your cortisol becomes elevated. You become in a, and you're very sensitive. You're more sensitive um, to comments. And, but then you, you get your husband off to work, get the kids to school, whatever, then you may have to go to work yourself or you get into traffic or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But there's, the world is full of coyotes. Yeah. I mean, things that spike the sympathetic nervous system. Mm -hmm. And if you stay in a, uh, highly elevated sympathetic state for too long, then the adrenals, which usually dampen the effect of the sympathetic, mm -hmm. you know, the parasympathetic nervous system, then it becomes exhausted. Then the sympathetic overdrives, and yeah. now you're full of cortisol, you're, and that creates pain, that creates irritability, that creates more frustration, more stress. And so yeah. it's a vicious, vicious cycle. And if it goes on too long, it can... Um, you know, it creates a lot of inflammation in the body. Then your immune system is busy trying to put the fire of inflammation out that it itself is creating because of the fact that it's not grounded. Yeah. And then this creates a fire in the body. And then eventually um, your health becomes compromised or yeah. a major health disorder manifests. But anyhow, so basically we have to ground out. Uh, in nature, we were grounded 24-7 you know, throughout all time. And today we barely, if ever touch the ground. So our bodies become, you know, full of inflammation mm -hmm. and our body, you know, exhausted. And so it interferes with and compromises our normal health. Yeah. I, so we want to be the jackrabbit. We want to avoid the coyotes. Yeah. We want to experience these earthing benefits. Uh -huh. How can someone experience the earthing benefits? First okay. of all, it's very simple in, in, you know, over the years we, we produced a, I imagine now around 24, 25, you know, peer reviewed, published studies and the objective, what we were trying to do. And again, I had a background in grounding and, but I knew nothing about biology. So I incorporated or brought in all of these researchers and scientists and whatever. And so basically what we wanted to identify is, and the reason we did this is because the first time I ever grounded myself or grounded any of my people, I slept better, but more importantly, anybody who had pain, chronic burning pain, like inflammatory pain, you could put an electrode patch on and ground them to the earth. And in five, 10 minutes, the pain is 100% gone. They could have had it for 20 years. So the point is you can't have inflammation in a grounded body. Mm -hmm. uh, inflammation is caused from, you have a pathogen in your body, you have a, you know, a damaged cell and the immune system sends over a neutrophil, the neutrophil, which is a white blood cell wraps around the pathogen and encapsulates it and releases reactive oxygen species. And it, that rips the electrons away from the pathogens and destroys them. So that's how the immune system works. And, but the problem is, is throughout all time, the immune system of the body was always grounded. And you always had this negative, this reservoir of negative charge. So if there were any remaining radicals left over from the immune response, they were automatically neutralized by Earth-free electrons, Earth's ground. And when we live in an environment where we don't have access to these electrons, then these radicals will rip electrons from nearby cells and damage them. They then that cell will send a message to the immune system saying, Hey, something's still here getting me send another neutrophil. So you end up with the chain reaction and that's the fire of inflammation. That is the, the word inflammation is body on fire in flame. Wow. Yeah. And so, it's the root of all illness, right? I mean, yes, yes it is. So yeah, basically, we've got an inflamed society. I mean, yeah. so many people have inflammation and don't know. Cause I think when you hear the word inflammation, you think, Oh, your skin's got to be red and burning or yeah. something, but inflammation is like a dis yeah. dissonance, I guess, in your body, right? It's, it's, yeah. it's stress to your body. So you don't always well, yeah. see it. You don't physically see the inflammation. No, it, it can sometimes if you have pain in your body, and this, you know, like Dr. Stephen Sinatra, who came along and helped out early in the early days, he said, Clint, when I first was working on this, he says, Clint, he said, you need to be researching inflammation. We knew that pain went away, but we knew nothing about inflammation. And he said, you need to be searching inflammation because you cannot have pain 
in the body unless you have inflammation first. Mm -hmm. So anybody who has any kind of pain in their body, they have some kind of inflammation going on. Mm -hmm. But the point, but the point of it is, I just make one more little small point, and then we'll go to the product thing. But the point is, once this inflammation cascade starts in the body, inflammation is not a normal term for health. It, uh, it, throughout time, throughout all history, we've never had the you word use the word inflammation. For instance, animals in the wild do not experience inflammation. They do not have cancer. They do not have cardiovascular disease, autism, lupus, or anything. Um, but animals who live indoors with their owners, they all manifest similar health disorders to their owners, and 50% of animals die from cancer. Yeah, yeah domestic, that's domestic, so crazy. Domestic animals. And the, that's, Clint, is that because the animals aren't getting that grounding, or is yeah. that because they're picking up on the stress of the household? <laughs> no, no, the animals outdoors are grounded all the time. Are grounded all the time. The animals indoors, they're, they're laying on a, on a fluffy couch full of static electricity. Yeah, and let's not even mention their horrible pet food. I've written some articles on that. It'll make yeah, it's, turn. it's all it's all of the above. Yeah, but you know, it's it's living apart from nature or living out of uh, what we now know to be part of nature. Mm -hmm. And so, anyhow, once this inflammation gets underway in the body, then the immune system is forever trying to put this fire out. Mm -hmm. But by trying to put it out, because it doesn't have enough redox potential or enough free electrons, it's actually creating more fire. It's like burning a log. Mm. So the, the key to it is you have to add electrons to the body, negative electrons, in order for the body to put out the fire. For uh -huh. instance, if you have pain in your body from arthritis or MS or anything else, you put a patch on it, the pain stops. So what you're doing is you're flooding the body with free electron. That puts out the fire so you can't have MS once you're grounded. Mm, it can only, wow. You can only That's have it after you take – after you – Go back to living. If you live, if you live grounded, your whole life, the odds of you having cancer are nil. The odds oh. of you are having any autoimmune disease is nil because the word autoimmune means the immune system is dysfunctioning. Mm -hmm. Something's interfering with the uh, uh, immune system's ability to maintain health. So Clint, the patches, so we can get into like the products. Um, yes. we, we use a pad and for anyone who's not visited earthing.com, which is Clint's website where he offers a plethora of solutions, uh -huh. um, including pads for under your, I'm barefoot right now, but I'm at my desk. Um, but there are, <laughs> cause this is a zoom call and we're, sure. we're at stay at home order. So we're doing this from home and <laughs> I'm barefoot. Um, but basically there's pads that you could put under your desk. We have a, it's like a third of a sheet size that goes uh -huh. on the bottom of your bed. I want to kind of give a visual to people. It lays over your fitted sheet and it plugs into the grounding part of your outlet. So it has a cord, it's plugged in, but there's absolutely no electricity. It's yeah. literally just tapping into the grounding of the earth. So yeah. I know that you write, you say, people say, oh, can I leave that on all the time? Yeah, you can leave it. You can leave the grounding pad on all the time. It's not costing any money because right. it's just, accessing that ground. So for us, Ron and I don't walk barefoot as much as we would like to. We don't have an actual backyard. We live in California. <laughs> we have a, we have a balcony. <laughs> um, and so we have a nice we, little patio. There we have a, yeah. We do go to the beach, but to be honest, we're not really good about walking barefoot enough. So we use the grounding pad. We sleep on that now every night. It's amazing. I have noticed a huge difference in like just the puffiness. I think the puffiness in the face when you wake up sometimes, you know, you get that look like, oh, I've noticed that for me. That's inflammation. That's inflammation. And Ron had had gout. He ha Ron has gout in his family and it's been something he had really severely. And over the years, we're vegan now through, just through changing his diet mm -hmm. that subsided. But even the grounding pad, like mm -hmm. Ron's virtually, he's med medication free now. And he was taking really high doses of uh, medication for that before. Yep. Um, and I want to explain too, because I know the conductive materials. So what is conductive? You talked about the rubber or the rubber soles are not, but the conductive materials would be grass, sand, dirt, and concrete. Is there anything else? So we, we want to get our feet on those particular surfaces, correct? Um, those surfaces are the ones that are naturally grounded. Okay. Any, anything else other than that would be artificially grounded, meaning not artificially, meaning you have they have grounded carpets that they use in clean rooms, 911 centers and mission critical centers because uh, you can't have any static you, in surgical centers. You have grounded floors. You have there's, But you can have a grounded floor. 
But anyhow, in our research, what we did, and this will help with the product thing, is when we were doing the research, we did, we were had no interest whatsoever or no idea that we would ever be in the business of providing products. That was not our mission. Our mission was to understand earthing or understand the effects of grounding. But anyhow, so in order to ground people, we had to make up what we call ground planes or grounding mats, pads, and uh, connect them to a ground and then have people sleep on them, sit on them, whatever, lay on them uh, and or patches in order to do the measurements for the clinical studies. And in the process of doing that, many of the people in the early days, uh, especially the small pads that were like one foot wide by two or three feet long, everybody wanted them after the studies, the subjects and a lot of the Subjects wanted them for their relatives and so on. So we accidentally started developing these products. So anyhow, wow. in, the, in the process of doing that, we started out with carbon fiber materials and we would bond them to felt pads. Carbon is, a, is a, an electrically conductive material. And then we connect it to a wire and, and connect it to the ground. And so when you lay on it, I mean, it, it's at earth potential. As soon as you lay on it, the electrical charge of the earth equalizes with the pad or the pad equalizes with that charge. Then when you lay on it, your body is conductive, then you become negatively charged. You become grounded. So in the process, we had to uh, develop these products in a way that people could sleep on them in, mm. in 24 hours a day. I mean, or, <laughs> and not, not 24 hours a day, but eight hours. A day. <laughs> That's some, a, some people, deep some sleep. <laughs> but eight, eight hours a day. Tired people. <laughs> yeah. So, so anyhow, it's uh, so we've spent over the last twenty years also trying to um, evolve or develop a family of products that are, first of all, effective. They have to do what they do. Second, they're safe, and then three, they have to be affordable to people. Mm -hmm. um, and and I worked with you know like the state of California, the you know health sciences and so on. And I remember talking to them one day, and they said, "We totally understand what you're doing. We only caution you on one thing." When you go out and start teaching this to the people, you need to have two things. One, a no-cost solution and a low-cost solution because this is something that affects everybody. Mm. And I said, well, the no-cost is easy. We just get them to go outdoors, take their shoes off <laughs> for a half hour, put their feet on the concrete or the ground or the grass, and just notice what happens. If they do that twice a day, it'll change their life, I guarantee anybody. How many minutes? For, for 30 minutes. You know, I mean, that's if you're younger and your health is not very compromised. Okay. If, if your health is very compromised, then you need to get grounded and stay grounded until you get well. That means sleep grounded, sit grounded. You just stay grounded as much as you can. So anyhow, we ended up starting coming out with mats. Then we came, you know, for the bed. We, we recognized early on that the most important thing we could do, uh, because you can't ground people during the day very easy. They're moving, they're traveling, they're whatever. And so we figured, well, the best thing we could do is develop something they could sleep on mm -hmm. and that's where the mats came from that's where those early sheets like you have came on mm -hmm. and just recently and we're just now in the final stages of because our company is a research and development company we've always our our business is doing research and development yeah. but now we're in the business of these pads and stuff but anyhow so now the, you're in e-commerce <laughs> yes. and so anyhow we have developed a family of of um uh, sleep products, they're carbon, and they're a mat the size of the bed or half the size of the bed. You put them under your sheet. They're 100% conductive, where the silver ones were only 5% conductive, and the silver would become oxidized after time. I was going to ask that. Do they do they wear off after a while? Yeah, the silver. Especially is, after wash, washing, because these are washable. They, they, they're yes. thin. Well, the one I have is thin as a sheet. Yes. And so you can just throw it in the washer. Yeah, they're 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 washable, but the problem is, is the um, the salts. I mean, the body when you perspire, mm -hmm. then the salts from your body will oxidize the silver. Oh, I see. And then eventually it'll lose its conductivity. If you wash it, the more often you wash it, the better. And sometimes they'll last up to a year, two years. Uh, that's every night using them. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes they won't last thirty days if somebody sweats a lot. Oh, I so see. we had to move away from that over the years. 
Somebody needs a new earthing pad. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, oh, get a hold of, we'll get a hold of Kylie afterwards and get you <laughs> some samples. Oh, but, that'd be great. <clears throat> but anyhow, we have the, uh, now we have pillow covers. You know, the pillow oh. cover, not the pillow case, the cover mm-hmm. that goes over your pillow. Okay. You put, it's a carbon cover and you put it on, zip it up, plug it in and, and then put your pillowcase on top and lay down and go to sleep. It's, that's one of the more popular products right now. Wow. So it doesn't matter, Clint, if it's coming through your feet or through your face, like you're still getting the benefits? Your body is conductive, so it will equalize over period. I mean, yes. It, it, the feet and the hands are the most conductive, meaning okay. in nature, that's those are our grandpa, ground paws, I guess. <laughs> but we were always, you know, we're our bare feet or our hands touching live things. And so throughout time, we were grounded. We're always e- easily grounded. But when you're lying down, um, you have on a, on a large ground plane, a huge ground plane, like a sleeping mat, then you've got, the, you've got two things going on. One, your body is absorbing the electrons from the earth that are coming through the pad. But also the earth itself has resonant, resonating uh, rhythms and frequencies. So at night they're low and during the at noon they're high. So, but they have to do with regulating your hormone cascades, cortisol at night mm-hmm. and things like that. So, so it, you, laying on the pad, you know, it quiets the nervous system. It discharges the inflammation and then, then the body will can re- heal and repair and return to normal. It's amazing. I, and it's comfortable. It sounds like this carbon material is thicker. So it probably even is like a nice little, almost padding, yeah, some of it is a little thicker, maybe the one, but the, the pillowcases, they're very thin. Okay. So it's not, no, it's not thick or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But the main thing is it works. So now we have a product that we know unequivocally five years from now, it's going to be working perfectly where we never had it. And these products are actually less costly than the silver. For the, the patches that you talked about for the hands, if someone uh-huh. has, if someone's having arthritis or, or pain yes. in their arms, now that would be a patch, but it's grounded. It's connected to the ground yeah, you outlet. Plug it, in. you plug plug it in. into the outlet. It's got a okay. 20 foot coil cord. Oh, okay. So you could actually wear that while you're typing on your computer. Yes. Okay. Well, that's really, so, so you have a visual, you guys, it's, it's a cord. And then and we'll, when you buy the product, you get a little device that plugs into your outlet. Yep. And then the cord plugs into that. Yes. So that all comes like as a package set, just so you kind of yeah. get a visual of what this looks like. Uh-huh. Hey, Clint, I'm curious, can these earthing products, can they actually uh, protect against cell phone frequencies as well if you're grounded with the earth? Well, any of the low frequencies, you know, like the 60 hertz and all of these things. Uh, so once you connect to the earth, then you are electrically one in the same as the earth. Okay. Okay. So, and that's the way we've always been. So all living things, trees and, and all these things that are electrically connected to the earth. Uh, so they are naturally protected from EMF. It's like trees underneath power lines. The leaves are fine, the roots are fine, you know, and so on. The animals that are grounded outdoors, they can sleep under power lines, it doesn't affect them, mm. and, and so on. When you are not grounded, then your body is an antenna and it attracts these EMFs and so on. And you can actually measure the charges on the body. But again, I have to be real careful with that now, and, and I want to fill in the blank there. But to answer your question, uh, most of these things don't penetrate the skin, so they're not going to really do any harm to the body. What they are going to do more than anything else is if you are ungrounded, then your body being an antenna, the hair on your body is an antenna, and sometimes it'll stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, which you know helps to contribute to that chronically elevated sympathetic state. Okay, the coyotes you were mentioning. The coyotes. So anyhow, the um, the cell phones, the biggest problem, everybody's worried about cell towers. Uh, a cell tower can transmit a signal that your phone can receive. The more, and, and that's, you know, that's, it's there. It's real and it's not going to change. That's our world and it's coming fast. Um, but on the, on the other hand, the real problem, if you're concerned about cell phones and 5G and all of these kind of things. The, the cell phone in your hand is the problem. The cell phone on your ear, um, because it has to put out a signal that can actually reach that tower. 
-hmm. So, and all day long, you're staying in contact. So there's noise going back and forth. Mm -hmm. So, and people are not going to give up their cell phones. So the thing you have to do is be prudent in how you use them. Uh, use the, the earbuds or the, the earphones or whatever. Use the speaker phone. I use yeah. the speaker phone all the time. Air tube headsets yes. um, are really great too. You yeah. don't want to use the Bluetooth, which, ugh, yeah. you know, people walk around with like an antenna attached to their head. Yeah. And I, I see them at the gym like that. And I'm like, do you understand that <laughs> it's like <laughs> one part you're trying to be healthy, but you're zapping your body. Yeah, but, but we have to go back to the people who have exhausted adrenals are very sensitive to these frequencies and signals or more for sensitive people who their adrenals are not exhausted. doesn't bother them whatsoever. When I had my, the, my healing journey, I had major burnout because I was, you know, constantly. And I, I was a career woman traveling all over the country. I was always on a plane, always packing, always go, 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 go. And, you're, um, you're triple it, A. <laughs> triple A. I was a triple A and man, it came crashing down. Like when you, when you put your body under that and you constantly put your body under that kind of stress and our society encourages that, you know, busy, the glorification of busy. And, you know, I mean, I was determined my worth by my checklist and how much in a day. And, you know, I was definitely drinking coffee and getting through my day. And I know so many people can listen and can relate to that. But let me tell you when that comes crashing down and you lose that, your energy is zapped and I, it's, it's no fun. And, you know, earthing, obviously, I mean, would you say it could heal that like adrenal burnout? Well, yeah, um, see, the, the thing that if, if you have any kind of a health disorder or a challenge, any kind of a health challenge or health is compromised, even if you have cancer, it doesn't matter what it is. The reason that exists is because your immune system is compromised. Because if your immune system is healthy, you won't have any of these modern health disorders, these mm -hmm. degenerative type health disorders. So always think that something is compromising the immune system. So what you have to do, I mean, something you are doing or something in your environment, and that's what you specialize in. Yeah. And, and so what you have to do is you have to remove the things that you're doing that interfere with your immune system's health, or you have to remove the things in your environment. And then your immune system will, will restore itself, restore the adrenals, and it will restore the body to normal. That's mm -hmm. the only thing that the immune system knows to do, and that's what it does. So it, it isn't taking all these things sometimes. It's really about putting ourselves back in nature in our most natural state as possible. Now we know that, that part of that's grounded. So it's grounding. Is, you have to have grounding. You have to have sunlight. We live in homes today where there's no sunlight. And right. our vitamin D is compromised. Right. So, so many people have you know, low vitamin D. Some yeah. amount of time outdoors in the sunlight with your bare feet on the earth is essential. Yeah. Then you have to have, uh, I believe, you know, I'm more of a naturalist, but, you know, spring water, you know, that has mm -hmm. normal mineral content. Yeah. And, right. Uh, exactly. And I, then you want to eat food as close to <laughs> raw as possible. Yeah, we did a raw, we almost went raw. We did a raw food cleanse for a couple of weeks. And um, well, we went for our first raw meal and we went to work out. I don't know if it was the day, that day or the next day. And I was just so energized. I wasn't even yeah. tired after my workout. And I said, yeah. this is crazy. So we went back to the restaurant, the raw restaurant. And I, we met the chef and I was telling her, gosh, I had so much energy. And she looked at me and she goes, yeah, that's the whole point of raw. <laughs> that is the whole reason people do the raw food diet because, you know, it's using the enzymes from the food. Yeah. Instead of your body depleting your body of that to break all the food down, yeah. and it's basically giving you all this extra energy. So I had so much energy, but I was always hungry. Yeah, Ron <laughs> didn't. There's no carbs, really. I mean, there is but carbs. Your but body weight came in to normalize everything. Normalizes. Yeah, if you're eating electrons. You're eating energy. Like living food, right? A raw, a raw food, hundred percent diet is difficult. I think for no, I, most people. I, I said as close as possible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I th I'd say we do that. We have a salad every single day and, sure. you know, lots exactly. of raw veggies, but going back to, so, so, Hey, if you're listening and you're in New York city or you're in a city where you don't have a beach and you can't walk on the sand, or maybe you don't even have grass nearby, you can actually walk on concrete. Is that right, yeah. Clint? Yes. Uh -huh. Concrete. It's so because concrete's conductive, like it's so weird. So you could walk on your sidewalk outside barefoot for half an hour. You get some strange looks from your neighbors and look out for glass. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, look out for look out for dirt. But that that can restore you just by the concrete. I always thought the concrete always shocks me. So what about concrete floors in your home? Would that do the same thing? 
Yeah, if you have, uh, you know, a lot of the homes that the people that we, we work with, they, we recommend that they, when they're building, to polish the concrete and okay. put a nice stain on it and put a water-based uh, sealer on it mm-hmm. and perfect ground. So wow. you're just like walking barefoot all day long. Yeah, and, and wood. Gonna, you're still going to have is- no, wood is not conductive. Wood is not conductive. I know wood feels so good on your feet. Um, yeah. I love wood floors, but yeah, it's not conductive. So yeah. nor is asphalt and nor is, of course, vinyl. I mean, if you have vinyl in your house, get rid of it. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's bad in millions of ways, not not just because it's not conductive, but obviously vinyl off gases, right. obviously VOCs into the air and phthalates. Vinyl is very high in phthalates because that's the chemical that softens the plastic, which is um, yes. an endocrine disruptor. So you don't want vinyl yeah. anything. No. Um, but so going yeah. back today, we're living in the, the time of coronavirus, COVID-19. And I had read one of your posts, Clint, on Facebook, actually, kind of early in this pandemic, where you talked about the cytokine storm that happens with yes. COVID patients. And you had mm-hmm. talked about earthing. Can you bring that full circle and kind of give us a little overview of how that works? Well, I, I can tell you that in our studies and over the years, we have grounded a lot of people. We've come across a lot of people with like COPD and or, um, you know, colds or pneumonias and whatever. And in, in many of these cases, what I, uh, what I did was take an electrode patch, two of them. The kit comes with two of them. But anyhow, you put one on the top of each lung. And then go ahead and plug them in. So basically, the re- and then all of a sudden, you know, within a few minutes, they can breathe. And wow. so it's like asthma or anything else. When you breathe the air in, then your immune system is forever cleaning or reducing the pathogens or, you know, cleaning and maintaining the lungs in a healthy state. So if all of a sudden you breathe in something that is toxic to the body, then the immune system has to go in and start cleaning up the damage or the whatever's going on. And in the process, sometimes if you don't have enough ground, if your body's not negative, then as these white blood cells release cytokines or whatever, then they will, you know, they oxidize and rip the electrons away from the pathogen. And in some cases, damage tissue. And then if you don't have enough ground, then any of these excess cytokines, they will damage an adjacent cell then the immune system sends more. And so that's what creates this, what they call a cytokine storm. Mm -hmm. So the only thing you have to do to stop it as far as my experience, and I have 20 years of experience Mm -hmm. uh, and observations, is you take and ground the body, put the patches on the top of the lung closest to where the cytokine storm is. And then what it does is it dampens the, I mean, it floods the body with free electrons, negative charge, negative your body's becoming negative and then that dampen there reduces the excess cytokine or the excess reactive oxygen species in the lung that calms everything down dampens it and then wow. healing then healing can take place so covid is a is something that's really a challenge right now i think it's all related but but i can't speak to it exactly we are doing a little bit of research with it within in uh, new orleans and a couple places but um, we don't have the studies back, so we can't really talk about it. But I can tell you in general, if you have any kind of a respiratory situation where, uh, like asthma, I mean, asthma, if you want, you know, just go outdoors, stand barefoot on the earth or jump in a swimming pool. It stops immediately. It's the swimming same. Swimming pool, right? Because you get because the, the water, it water is water's, the water's and, Yeah. So that even taking a bath, right? Even just yes. taking a bath. Yes. You are grounded, right? You're grounded oh, when you're bathing. Wow. In, in, in if as long as you have cold water pipes coming in, which you do with you know the cold, but the the drains and the newer ones may have plastic, but the older homes yeah, all have. That's, the, so the you the need metal pipes, right? Yeah, yes, if you have metal so, pipes, you're grounded. Yes. I think we they replaced our pipes, and I think they're those PEX. Is that what the name of it? Uh, I I think that's what it's called. Are you familiar with those? They are kind of a uh, I was so upset about it, but the old, the pipes were bursting in people's homes. The metal pipes yep. Um, yep. was a problem. So they used this, I think it's called PEX and it is unfortunately a synthetic material. Yes. Uh-huh. I was very upset about it. I read a lot about it. it. They say it's not as bad as, you know, PV. It's yeah. obviously not as bad as PVC or right. anything, but um, so you have to have the metal pipes. Otherwise you're not grounded in a bathtub, right? Right. Okay. But um, in the ocean and would you need salt water or, 
does it have to be? No, it doesn't have to be a saltwater pool. It could be just no. a regular pool. Yeah, just regular pool. Okay. Saltwater. Like yes. Wow. Yeah. So ha- have they used this grounding on COVID patients that you're aware of, or even in hospitals in general? Is, are there hospitals around the country that are actually using this? You know, the hospitals and everybody out there are so, I mean, you have to follow protocol because there is so much activity. Everybody yeah. has to know what everybody's doing and everybody has to do the same thing. So mm-hmm. there can't be any changes. So mm-hmm. there's not much experimentation. And most of the experimentation is off premise, uh, taking care of people who are not in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> we can't give anybody, you know, a, I can't come out and say, just do this and, and you're going to, all I can say is get grounded. It's certainly going to help because a lot of the, the COVID is if your immune system is strong, and you are healthy, then your body can handle most of these viruses and most anything that comes along. Colds, people who are healthy have less colds. People who are sick mm-hmm. have more colds. Yeah. You just use it common sense. So, but it's about your immune system. It's not about what grounding does for uh, COVID. It's really about what grounding does is it puts out the fire of inflammation in your body. The immune system can recover. And then it can go and do what it's supposed to and function normally rather than, you know, you know, you know what do we call it? Um, autoimmune disease, autoimmune disorder. Disorder means the immune system can't function like it's supposed to mm-hmm. because something's interfering with it. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're talking about, fix it. And then your immune system will do its best because 90% of the people, I guess, and 99% of the people that have COVID, they, they recover, they survive. But anyhow, so the people whose health is compromised, whose immune systems are compromised, they are the ones that are suffering in, in the hospitals, and your immune system can't manage the COVID. Right. Well, Clint, we have a lot of electrohypersensitive people uh, that come to us for information. Can mm-hmm. they ground themselves the same way, or should they be careful with this? Well, when you say electrosensitive, that's what we're talking about. He has, um, they have a, they're, some, they're not electrosensitive. They have exhausted adrenals. Okay. And I, and I can only say that because I have 20 years of observation with fibromyalgia and lupus and all these things. And everybody's, you know, talking about electrosensitivity, but it, that's a, that's a secondary, it's a secondary thing to exhausted adrenals. So once you normalize your adrenals, then your sympathetic is doing, still do what it's supposed to do. It'll be sensitive, um, but your parasympathetic will modulate these things so that you don't have this uh, overdriving sympathetic, which creates the sensitivity. Okay. Did you heal yourself completely from lupus and fibromyalgia through earthing and grounding? No, I never had any of those. I, I, when, I, when I got into grounding uh, 20 years ago, I just asked the question, but I was at that time I was 54. I'm, I, I turned 76 yesterday. Oh, wow. Happy birthday, oh, Clint. Yeah. Oh. You so, sound good, like, too. I, for those who aren't that, seeing Clint, he, he is thriving, he's surviving, and he is grounded. Yeah. <laughs> but, but anyhow, so but at, the, at 50, 50 years old, or at 54, I had um, all kinds of aches and pains. The arthritis stuff was starting to show up. And, but I was a cowboy, and I was a, I've skied most of my life. I uh, played tennis. I've done everything I have. Twisted knees, twisted ankles, back surgery. I've had everything you can imagine. So when I was, I remember when I was 54, I went outdoors one time and, and, and I looked up, and this is just aside from the story, but I looked up and I said, God, why didn't you make my body with so much pain in it? Mm. <laughs> and then it was later I found out he didn't. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Clint. Oh uh, my God. But anyhow, so it's, uh, electric, you know, just to answer the question, electrosensitivity is you need to ground out the inflammation in your body and, and do and, and focus on restoring your adrenals. And you can do that by reducing the stress in your mind because what's causing a lot of these, what's causing a lot of the inflammation in your body is it's the stress that you're, it's the fight or flight. It's, yeah. the, it's the mental stress. People yeah. who have great loss. I remember talking to a lady one time who had MS and I asked her, I said, you weren't born with MS. And she was like 34. And she says, no, it just showed up a couple of years ago. And I said, what happened to cause it to manifest? And she said, I don't know. And then I was 
getting things organized for her and everything. And all of a sudden she said, you know, that was the year that we lost our home. Oh. And, and, you know, we went into, we were on the street and we were whatever and whatever. Yeah. And so these things, uh, you know, uh, most of it, and, and I've asked many, many people, whether it doesn't matter what it is, cancer, it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. What happened in your life prior to this manifesting. Wow. And, and there's always a story of loss. Yeah. A story of great loss or life didn't turn out the way they expected or they were jilted or they, this. And yeah. It's just, you know, that's interesting. We go, we go to an integrative medical center and um, they also have a cancer center as a part of it. And the first thing they do when they have a cancer patient is they evaluate their, the mental, like you just talked about, what was the incident? They do a really thorough kind of yeah. frequency analysis and they do, uh -huh. I think even not a hypnosis, but kind of where they go back and they find out what was the, yeah. The moment, right, that Which caused, problem. yeah, could have even been back in childhood and maybe mm -hmm. the disease manifests years and years later. Yeah. So we have a call on the phone if you're open to answering some questions, Clint. Absolutely. So, Brett, welcome to the show. We heard you have a question for Clint. Clint, you know, thank you for, you know, explaining the benefits of birthing to the world. You know, I watched the, the movie and it's very fascinating, by the way, and I had the book as well. And um, I'm not a, a nature guy. I don't always go out all the time. So having your indoor product are, is definitely a helpful thing for me to have, to, uh, to stay grounded, for example. So I just want to ask you real quick, though, about your product. I do own your throw, your blanket, for example. And I'm curious, like when using it, like how much of your body or skin really needs to be exposed to it to get the full benefits? I mean, is it can it just be part of your body? Is it more skin, the better? Or, or what, 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 would you, what would you say? Uh, I will say this. Any amount of grounding is good. Any amount of contact, but more is better. And that comes from my background in the communication industry. If you want to quiet the noise in your environment, or if you want to ground, in this case, the body, then, you know, the better, the more ground, the better. Right. So the more exposed to your skin on your products, the better, is what you're saying. Yeah, but, but, but it's not necessarily entirely metal contact to skin contact or conductive. It's about, you know, when you lay on something, you, your body is always hydrating. All right. You know, perspiration is hydrating the material. And then also there's humidity in the air. And so there's always, there's a certain amount of electric conductivity, you know, you know when you have clothing on is what I'm trying to say. So you don't have to necessarily have skin contact, but like the throw, if you wrap it around yourself with your clothes on it, you're going to notice that you're going to feel great. Right. Are there, well, yeah, so are there any parts of your body that are like, you know, better than others? Like if it's like just exposed to my legs versus my feet or arms, does it matter? Well, it's um, the bottom of your feet and the bottom of your, and the palms of your hands are the most conductive parts of your body. Like if you go outdoors, put your hands and your feet on the ground and you're going to get the, the, more, the most significant result in the shortest period of time. If you just lay down, you'll get the same result. It may take a few minutes, a few seconds, or a few minutes longer. But, but it, you know, it's, if you have, for instance, arthritis in a knee or a hip, then you'll want to ground that quarter of the body, the leg or the hip or the whatever. And because what you're doing is it's a shorter path to ground, meaning when you're putting electrons into them or pouring electrons into the body, they get used up. If you run, if you're, if you're, if they're coming through the feet, then your body's using them up any, anywhere and everywhere in the blood. The blood circulates once a minute. And so it's carrying electrons all over the place and they get used up. So you don't necessarily get that. You don't put the fire out as fast. You still put the fire out. It just happens a lot quicker when you put the grounding, like in this case, uh, if you have an issue, ground as close to the issue as possible, either in the palm of the hand or the bottom of the foot that's closest to that. Otherwise, put a patch right on it or wrap the throw around your leg or whatever makes, you know, so your if you're body. having if you're having knee pain, wrap that blanket around your knees. Yeah, your body so you knows. Can, yeah. yeah, you could spot treat basically with this. Yes. Okay. Yeah, just do what your body tells you to do. That's what I didn't realize. Where the pain is, yeah. Now, Brett, since you're on the call, I'll ask this question too because you might be interested in this. Um, if you stop grounding, if you stop, like say Brett or anyone listening gets their pad, they use it a couple times and then they don't use it, like are the effects cumulative or is this something you really need to keep doing? Well, the, the effects are cumulative because you, what, every time you ground, you put the fire out. You reduce inflammation in the body. Now, if you're grounded outdoors, living in nature, grounded all the time, you could not have inflammation in a human body. It's not possible. You'll still have the inflammatory cascades, but they are, they are, they are short and they, and they unwind naturally. But inflammation is a chronic 
fire in your body. You cannot have a chronic fire in your body. In nature, it's not possible. So <clears throat> I'm sorry, I get lost in my words. <laughs> <laughs> We've been all over the place. Um, just like, uh-huh. should you continue to do this every day? Yes. Um, yeah, so this is something, so, this is like brushing your teeth. This needs to be part of your life. So if you, if you, can, if you get a nice routine going and then ground anytime you possibly can outdoors, with your bare feet and so on, but it is cumulative. And if you go for a long period of time without grounding, then the inflammation will continue to build, will start building back up. And then you feel the tingling, the more inflamed you are, the more you'll feel the tingling. Mm. If you, if you go without grounding for a week, you get a lot of people say, well, I don't feel that energy anymore. Like I used to. And so then I said, well, just go, go spend a couple of days ungrounded and come back Mm -hmm. and then you'll feel the body starting to, charge back up. Hey, Clint, our caller actually has the blanket. How long should he wear this blanket? I know obviously more the better, but just to get the effects, a positive effects of grounding, should he be wrapped in this an hour a day, half an hour a day? I, I always tell everybody it's, if you have pain, you need, if you, if you have pain in your body of any kind, you need to get grounded and stay grounded until it goes away because this is inflammation. Now, if you can't stay if you can't do it all in one period, then do it routinely until the inflammation goes away. I mean, yeah. And, but that's how you know how much grounding you need is you have pain in your body because you don't have pain in your body when you're not grounded. I'm 76 years old. I don't have pain in my body, but I've got my feet on a ground man and I slept grounded last night and I have a concrete floor. So yeah, wow. you're like a ground, you're a ground poster child. Yeah. <laughs> I try to be. That's so a good thing when you say you're grounded, Clint. You're grounded. Yeah, kids That's should good. be grounded more, yeah. right? <laughs> I, I, I walk my talk. I've got my 5,000 steps, first 5,000 steps in, and I wear either wear a, a, a conductive shoe or a or I walk barefoot. Wow. So, Brett, if you're still there, is your is your blanket a throw blanket or is it like a blanket that's a full size that you would put on your bed? Yeah. I uh, know it's a throw, so some guys I'd use on, you know, watching TV, but... Could he just wrap that around, like, the bottom of his feet every night sure. when he sleeps? Yeah. Okay, he can, he can that. use that as, or, like, a pad. Or he can just lay it down and lay on it like a sheet, or use it as a cover. Okay. Those are, the, that's how I would recommend. Okay, that's yeah, what I Now, Clint, earlier you mentioned, you said twice a day for 30 minutes, you can go out on your bare feet and get grounded. Does that same concept work now too? So let's just say I got one hour of sleep on my bed, but I have the, the grounded pad. Is that good enough to get the bare bone benefits of grounding? Um, well, you'll, you'll know because if, if, you have pain, <laughs> if you have pain afterwards, you need more. Yeah, okay. Uh, what, just keep what doing I, it. Until- yeah, what I was saying there is if you can't do anything else, if you're, you, know, you have no means or no money or any way to get grounded, indoors then the best thing you can do is to get grounded outdoors Mm -hmm. 30 minutes in the morning after you wake up get all the inflammation and pain out of your body then after you go beat yourself up and bite the bear all day long and you come (laughs) home at night and all the coyotes are have chewed on you then you go back outdoors and you ground yourself for another 30 minutes to discharge the trauma of the coyote chase i love it that's amazing this is so great. I hope I hope the listeners are loving this as much as me. Um, I've watched the movie, I've had the pad, and I, I've learned so much. Yeah. Now, I, I know you kind of answered this, but just to just to reiterate, is it more beneficial if you had the choice to do the grounding outside barefoot versus your pad, or would you say they're equal? Well, I mean, the idea of the pad was to replicate mm-hmm. going outdoors and sleeping on the earth because we knew that that's you know that's when the body heals and restores itself. And in nature, we always slept on the earth. So <clears throat> they're identical in purpose, and, and they will, I, you'll get electrons either way. The, if you have no money, you have no resources, you, you have no option. You have to go ground bare feet. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but even if you don't, it's like in the afternoon, you know, it's like when you ground a child or you ground what you're saying is you want them to re, you want to return them to normal. So no matter what's going on in your life, you can be upset. You can have whatever going on, but go outdoors and just sit on the earth for a few minutes. You can't be, you can't be mad and angry when you're grounded. 
<laughs> say that to a teenager. No. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's true. It I know drains, what you're saying. It drains yeah. that stress out of them, and then everybody's happy again. I mean, wow. it, it only takes just you know 20, 30 minutes, and they're a different That's person. Amazing. I feel like we've solved the world's problems. Just, <laughs> just. <laughs> it gets rid of the aches and pains. Uh, it, it changes the, uh, you know, the, your circulation improves. Yeah. Uh, the pain, everything, and then your demeanor change. And it's like I, I tell the every lady, I said, this is a beauty product because you're going to look 10 years younger in 30 minutes. Right. It, wow. I, you know, I read the benefits on your website, earthing.com. Yeah. Aging backwards, so to speak. I mean, I know you don't really use those words, but yeah. you know, helping cause that's inflammation, right? That causes us yeah. to you're age. Reducing, you're reducing the inflammation and the body goes to normal. Wow. So if you have leather sold shoes, which they still make, right? Yeah. I mean, if you have leather sold shoes, you are getting grounded, correct? Uh, if you wear them all the time and they're hydrated, you know, have a little bit of, you know, in the old days, you, we used to wear them all the time and they were always very conductive because you had the body salts and the sweat perspiration mm -hmm. from your feet. Okay. Now, if you let them sit in a closet for a month and put them on, then they're pretty dry. So they won't be as conductive, okay. but they are semiconductor. So yes, they're better than not. And I wonder, it made me think about people in Africa and other countries where they are barefoot so often. Yeah. And yeah, they do seem like you don't have the illness, the level of these crazy illnesses that you were talking about at the top of the show, the autism and a yeah. lot of the autoimmune disorders right. um, like we do here in, you know, developed countries. And they're always barefoot and we're always, we always have shoes on even at the beach, you know? Yeah. So does earthing help really with weight loss? I remember during the movie, Oh yeah. Uh, one Rebecca. of the main narrators, Rebecca. Yeah. She actually lost weight by grounding herself. Like a lot outside. of weight, like 50 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah weight is, um, it's like anything. If you are full of stress, full of inflammation, then you, you're full of anxiety, irritability, oftentimes depression. What do you do? You eat. Yeah. And you don't, it's a chore to get up and go exercise and so on. So when you get grounded and you put out the fire of inflammation in your body, and your metabolism begins to normalize, then you have more energy. And so it's easier to move. Grounding by itself is not going to cause you to lose weight. Mm -hmm. But what it does is it puts out, the, it changes your mental psyche. It changes your metabolism. And now you can, you get rid of the inflammation. And then you're, then you have energy. I mean, you, you, it's easy to go out and get up and go for a walk or to eat better or to do the things that are more healthy. So Clint, uh, we shouldn't drop our gym membership and just buy grounding pan. We have to do both. <laughs> no, but, but I'll tell you one thing about gyms and we, we work a lot with athletes and we have for many, many years and we've grounded uh, hundreds of the most elite athletes in the world, including the tour de France teams and so on. But basically <clears throat> when you exercise, you're creating a lot of inflammation in your body. And we did studies up at the university of uh, Oregon and Eugene uh, because they have all the athletes up there and, and so on. So what we found was, is when you go exercise, you're creating a lot of inflammation in your body. If you will ground yourself for 15, 30 minutes barefoot afterwards, then you discharge all that inflammation. Then when you go to bed, you don't have, you, you don't wake up in the morning with all that aches and pains in your body. Wow. You know, the That's... delayed onset muscle soreness. You don't experience delayed onset muscle soreness when you ground after your exercises. Oh Otherwise you're doing, you, in many cases, you're doing a lot of damage to your body with exercising. So there's a balance here. You, you need to discharge that inflammation that you've created. Yeah. So you reduce especially, the recovery time. Yeah. Especially yeah. runners, you know, runners, yeah. it's very hard on their body. So many yeah. people who do marathons, they end up with so many knee problems and all of that. Yeah. So Clint, this has been absolutely incredible. I know I had, I had read that we recommend more vitamin G for everybody listening. <laughs> more vitamin oh, G, get your grounding, get your earthing. Yeah. I, is there any last thing you want to leave the listeners with besides visiting earthing.com? <laughs> well, it's, it's really, I mean, if you get a chance, watch the movie. I think that fills in all the blanks. And those, it's a very authentic movie. It's, it's real people and real life stories. And uh, it's very credible. And you'll learn a lot from it. But beyond that is really health is the body's most natural state. If you do not have health, then something in your environment is interfering with your immune system's ability to maintain your health or something you're doing 
is stressing your immune system to the point that it can't maintain health. So rather than looking out there. Yep. For, for that all, magic pill. There, there is no magic pill. What you need to do, you need to get grounded. You need sunlight. You need. Reconnect you need, with all of that natural, the vitamin D yeah, from the sun. Yeah you, yeah, you need to open up, get your, get your mind out of the way and just go back to nature for a while. We all feel better after a vacation. Why is that? Because we're out in nature for right. a week or, you know, assuming yeah. you're taking vacation. <laughs> Beautiful, yeah. natural place. That's yeah. my idea of a vacation. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Clint. This has been so incredible. We'd love to have you back. Anytime. Open to that. Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget to take our free seven day healthy at home challenge. Go to bit.ly forward slash the healthy at home challenge to up level your health today. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did. And be sure to tune in next week for another very special episode and to find out what the heck is going on in your home. Bye bye. This episode of the Healthy Home Hacks podcast has ended, but be sure to subscribe for more healthy living strategies and tactics to help you create the healthy home you've always dreamed of. And don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best content. See you on the next episode.